Look at these nails. Look at what I've done. These sort of feel like a fitting symbol for how my life is going right now. So in a recent writing vlog, I mentioned how I've been going through somewhat of an existential crisis lately. You know, what am I doing? Am I on the right path? Is all of this futile? So I figured while I talked through that a little bit more in depth, since it has to do with writing in some aspect, career stuff, you know, everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> I figured I would focus on this, the ire of some of my discomfort. Actually, it's that. Do you see that? That huge stack of books? That's part of the problem. I'm also sitting here because the other part of the problem is the closet where I have an excess of clothes, much like my excess of books. And in fact, in the closet also have more books. So my main goal for this video is to get all of the books that are up there onto the shelves down here. AKA, I need to get rid of an equal amount of volume or space of these books in order to make room for those or some of those, depending on what I wanna keep. And then I will be donating them. And then I'll also be doing a spring cleaning of my closet, getting rid of all the clothes that I just don't wear or that don't fit, and I will be donating those too. Will this solve all of my problems? No, but it will solve some. So let's chat and book. I don't know that that's the right verb, but y'all know what I mean. Clean, spring clean. Whatever. <laughs> Library books. Ugh. So the reason that all of these books bother me so much is because I see them every day. Every single time I wake up, that is what I see in the morning. Just sitting there, taunting me. <laughs> the same thing is true for any time I open the closet, right? It's just a constant reminder of this thing that I want to do, but I haven't done yet. Do I want this book? Well, I figured that out. I'm gonna flash you back to what I said during that writing vlog. The first time I sort of mentioned my existential crisis. This is a nice clean desk, which was definitely not clean like earlier today. Okay, but I've spent basically since I got back just sort of cleaning things. I had to clean this desk and then I was fixing up all the other areas and then I'm trying to go through my room finally. I think I'm in the midst of an existential crisis. Cleaning seems to help. I think it got to a point where I just had so much stuff everywhere. It was always in the back of my mind, you know, which doesn't help when you're trying to figure stuff out to begin with if everything around you is messy. So you can see why this constant reminder that I wasn't doing the thing I wanted to do has been such a problem. In some ways, solving these two issues will help so much in the fact that the visual cues won't be like constantly pelting my brain. However, both of these things have been a problem for a while and yet I was fine for most of that while. One, two three, four, five, six on this shelf. That's not gonna be enough. <laughs> so really it's been the compounding of multiple issues that's really kind of thrown me backwards. Once again, the nail thing. I know how painting my nails works. I love painting my nails. I'm not really a makeup person, but the putting on of polish makes me feel sort of like all tied together the same way I think makeup does for a lot of people or having like a signature item or signature look is the polish. And the point I'm trying to make there is that I know how long it takes to paint your nails. I know how long you should wait to let the polish set and usually that time is very therapeutic for me. But this is a good representation of how, even knowing that, I still sort of F it up. And it's basically just because my brain is everywhere and I'm trying to do everything all at once. In this instance, even when I know that it might mess up my nails, which ultimately kind of ruins the point of doing them in the first place if I'm just gonna completely just destroy them. And then it also takes away from like the therapeutic aspect for me because I rushed the actual activity and now I'm just looking at them and like am disappointed again, like the visual cue sort of thing. And I've been feeling this way, not just with my nails, but like with stories too. I want to get certain things done. And even though I know how long something's gonna take, I'm not content with it. Or I think even planning for how long it's gonna take, somehow the rules are gonna bend for me. I would normally assume it's a patience thing, except that from the very beginning, I knew how much time it should take, minimum. And I'm still trying to rush it. <laughs> because you know, at one point when I was setting up all the goals, I'd made peace with the fact that it would take me a while. But somewhere in the process, I'm like, no, because my brain gets all frazzled and I start freaking out and then yeah, I'm just no longer at peace with it. All right, I have all the books pulled out. We'll see if there's enough space for the ones up top, given that. And none of this is necessarily that I don't want to read these books at some point. It's that they should be easy to find and also sometimes I buy things and I don't actually, I don't actually need them. You know, they're on clearance or whatever. 
ta-da! Now I'm gonna go through these and make sure I want all of these books. Because the great thing about being a writer is that people always give you books, which is what I want, but then, you know, this problem happens. <laughs> and now all that's left is to put my little animals back. According to color, you can see I actually have some gaps as if I might have room to do something at some point. <laughs> yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> oh. I can see I actually need to mark through some, some other stuff I finished. Also book related. I did actually read finally A Discovery of Witches. Can you tell I'm still on my January goals? <laughs> I've been sort of keeping it up as a reminder even though you know it's now basically the end of February which in the spirit of um, the visual triggers, I'm kind of thinking I should just get rid of at this point. Like some of these goals aren't even the same goals I have now. <laughs> For example, I don't want to read this and I've kind of changed out this book. I'm still working on that one. As you can see, I'm also reading Anthony Bourdain's book. And instead of Game of Thrones, I'm reading Mistborn right now, which I am loving. loving. So basically, as I just erase all of this, <laughs> I'm realizing how much I've been punishing myself and not hitting these goals when the goals aren't even the same, which is just about the dumbest thing you can do. <laughs> I'm out my bats. I have new goals and I should say now that I don't think there's anything wrong with changing goals, at least in concept. When we get to things like this, I do feel bad that even if my goals aren't the same, I didn't hit initially what I needed to even though pivoting is often the better answer anyways. There we go. Be free, my bats. Be free. I should have pointed it out before erasing it, but I did have a goal to post more Medium articles or essays, which is still a goal. That's one that has not changed. However, uh, pfft, I'm a little bit embarrassed because the first one I posted this year had typos in it and I didn't realize until like a day later and I'd already talked about it and it's crazy because I hate typos so much and so I proofread this thing a million times and I don't know if it was the copying over from Scrivener to Google Docs to Medium to what happened because my original file didn't have any typos. I even went back and checked because it was actually Brooke who pointed it out to me a day later I think and I was just like no so anyways it's a good lesson to learn to like double check in all the possible places after but I just was like Ugh. and there are only like two of them but still <sighs> the real dumb thing is what I've done after because I corrected the mistakes immediately but I've like kind of punished myself since being like you can't post anything now do you trust it won't have typos and I've really just held myself back from it because of that which is so silly because once again it's fixed. It's fixed. And yet from that moment on, I've let it weigh on me. Hmm. <laughs> the other aspect of this is that of course I have to proofread and do all this stuff for my job normally. So then to fail it in a different aspect when it's all me is infuriating, but also because I'd like to self-publish certain kinds of books at some point and this feels like it doesn't bode well and then I'm putting too much pressure on it and <laughs> However, things haven't been all bad as I turn to my closet. It will make sense, I promise. <laughs> yeah. I've been talking with my brothers recently about how it feels like not everything can go right in your life all at once. And this is gonna, this, God, this is a whole thing that I've been like pondering way too much. Um, but my fitness goals have been going great amazingly well. I've actually stuck with them, stuck with the habit and the routine of going to the gym and like pushing myself longer than I have in a really long time. And I've actually been eating better too because you know, as part of my goals for the training, I feel better if I haven't just like eaten all the food, all the bad food. It's kind of like I'm just now learning moderation, but it's helping me so much. And part of me wonders if I can only really excel at one aspect of my life at a time and all the rest must suffer or something. As if I only have the brain power or the capabilities to propel forward in one way. But why? Why would that be? And does speaking of it or even thinking it then sort of cause it to happen? Is it a chicken or the egg scenario or negative self-talk or I don't know. How do I bottle up the successful process and approach to one facet of my life and replicate it in the others? 
I really don't know. And I'm sure the science behind habit making could help and I find it extremely fascinating but what I know I also do is that I'll listen to so many podcasts and I'll read so many books specifically about that but I always find that I lean really heavily into those sorts of things when I'm thinking too much. And once again it's the thinking about doing instead of the actual doing. The Vlogbrothers recently posted a video where John was reviewing his 1100th I think day of this sort of physical health challenge that ultimately really helped him mentally too. He mentions a lot of the positives associated with these kind of changes while also recognizing that like he drew this cute little graph. There's a high associated with making progress and improving but at a certain point you've improved so much that you're kind of getting it's not diminishing returns but the return is so much smaller you kind of level out on this hilltop and I think I tend to struggle when I'm at the top of the hill with forgetting how much progress I've made and not appreciating it and once again getting too into my head and then sort of accidentally rolling myself back down the hill. But I am finally done. I'm actually keeping all of this because it's winter clothes and my socks but we have two big bags of clothes and then the books so all that's left is to donate them and then talk generally about what all these realizations mean for me I guess that and this vague sort of notion of the future <laughs> all right well it's a lot of stuff I'm thinking we'll do library first and then Goodwill and then I'm gonna get myself some bubble tea as a reward and because it's right there. Yeah, let's go! <laughs> Ta -da! That's where I usually drive through to drop off my books and I think here's where I can donate them. Goodbye books that you can't see from here. <laughs> We're here. We got our little receipt. And now I have bubble tea. Everything is wonderful. And it's all gone. So now that I'm back, let's talk about the future. Um, first in very specific terms, such as the fact that I move stuff right on my bookshelf again. <laughs> I know that says old books, but there's no books in there. Despite what it looks like, it is organized into sort of systems. I just have to figure out a place where I can put stuff. You know what? I may make a promise to myself to tackle one of these items. <laughs> per day. So it's not a huge thing I have to do each day, but that's, you know, five different categories of stuff. Five days. Five days and I'll be done. Um, yeah, I feel so much better. I feel accomplished in having done all of that actually. But also I recognize that me being able to do this, me even being able to talk about it in the vlog, was farther along in the path of feeling better, of kind of working my way out of my existential crisis than, you know, the weeks before then. I don't exactly know how not to feel this way in the future. Like, is this something that, you know, just once or twice a year I'm gonna have to go through? Uh, you know, history says yes. <laughs> but I do feel like I'm learning better sort of coping mechanisms along the way so that I can help to pull myself out of it more quickly than in the past. Again, progress. Please do comment down below. Let me know if you've been in a funk recently. Let me know what you've done to kind of get yourself out of it. I had multiple things that kind of contributed to mine, both like mentality and then also very specific things. So let me know if that happens to you too and if it's the building up of multiple things that really gets you. But also please do let me know a part of your life that you're excelling in. And thank you all so much for watching and thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. Sylvia Vijas, Alexandra Tari, M.A. Wool, Brianna Leesman, R.M. Mulkey, Natalie Ruth Taylor, and D.A. Flint, and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye! I did have that, um, medium... I did have a goal to... I did have a goal to...